वेलकम टू पैथन लेक्चर एवरी वन इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टॉक अबाउट ट्रिपल सो वी टॉक अबाउट अ लिस्ट एंड वी हैव सीन दैट दैट हाउ लिस्ट इज गोइंग टू वर्क इन केस ऑफ लिस्ट वी कैन ट्राई टू स्टोर अ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ अ हेट्रोजीनियस डेटा इन द सिमिलर मैनर इफ वी हैव अ ट्रिपल्स वी कैन ट्राई टू स्टोर अगेन अ हेट्रोजीनियस काइंड ऑफ अ डेटा नाउ हाउ दिस ट्रिपल्स इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम अ लिस्ट वी विल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर लेक्चर सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड विद द स्क्रीन शेयरिंग ओके so here let's suppose i am going to create a variable called as t and i can try to give open and close bracket now this is basically a tuple so if i am going to create any variable with the parenthesis right open and close so it is going to create a tuples now here if i am going to check what is a data type for this particular t it is going to tell me that data type of this one is equals to tuples again there is another way by which i can try to create a tuple so maybe i can try to use tuple as a function so there is a inbuilt function inside a python which is available and even with the help of this function you all will be able to create a tuple now here if i am going to check what is a data type for a t1 so again it is going to be tuple okay so in this two way i can try to create any kind of a tuple now let's try to create a tuple let's try to hold some sort of a data inside a tuple and then perform some sort of a operation so here let's suppose i am writing t2 and bracket bracket here i can try to hold maybe an integer for now and if i am going to check so yes it is going to give me t2 is equals to tuples okay fine t2 is equals to tuple now if i would like to check what is the length of this entire tuples means how many units how many data set is available inside this tuples so in total there are four data set which is available inside a tuples okay that's completely fine now i'll try to create another tuple t3 so where i'm going to keep a different different kind of a data not just a simple integer kind of a data but i'll try to keep integer i'll try to keep some floating point number inside this one i'll try to keep maybe some sort of a string over here i can try to keep some sort of a complex data set in this particular place i'll try to keep some sort of a boolean variable in this particular place or maybe i can try to keep even a list inside a tuples right list inside a tuples now every kind of a data every kind of a data that we have studied so far yes we are able to keep it inside a tuples called as t3 okay so inside a tuples we can hold exactly similar kind of a data set that we were able to hold in case of a list now you are going to ask me a question that okay so if we can try to perform the exact same operation that we are able to perform inside a list so same operation if we can perform inside a tuples then why we are even talking about it why people have introduced tuple inside python let me explain you that part as well so here let's suppose we have t3 right now if i'm going to write t3 and then if i'll try to access zeroth element so i'm trying to access zeroth element out of this t3 it is giving me 2 and similarly we were able to access an element even from a list okay i'll try to create parallelly one small list as well so here i'm going to keep some sort of a data set so this is the list and this is the tuple so t3 list i have created and then l list i am trying to keep over here now t3 right so t3 of 0 i am trying to access similarly i can try to access l of 0 so procedure is exactly same you have to use a square bracket so whenever you are trying to perform a indexing operation in case of list in case of a string as well as in case of a tuple in all three cases this is going to be same in terms of a indexing operation in terms of a slicing operation now let me try to allocate some data set on zeroth location so as of now in t3 on zeroth location we have 2 and inside a list we have 3 now what i will do is maybe i can try to allocate something else inside a tuples and parallelly i will try to perform similar kind of operations even in case of a list so here instead of like a 2 i would like to keep maybe my name right s u d h s u d h a n s h u tanshu and similarly in case of list at zeroth location i would like to store my name now let me execute this and then let me execute this now this is a difference guys yes here you will be able to see that whenever we are trying to allocate any kind of a data whenever we are trying to do any kind of a modification in a particular place inside a tuple 
it is giving me tuple objects doesn't supports item assignment it simply means that tuples are basically immutable entity yes tuples is basically an immutable entities whereas if i'm trying to perform a similar kind of a operation in case of list it is allowing me but in case of a tuple it's not allowed at all and this is a major difference between list and a tuples so tuples are basically immutable entity whereas list is a mutable entity you can mutate a data at any indexes in case of a list but you will not be able to do the same kind of operation same kind of operations in case of a tuples now why we are going to use tuple if we are not able to mutate a data so let's suppose i'm trying to store a kind of a data so which no one will be able to access or no one will be able to change it for example my password so if i would like to protect my password so i need a kind of a collection so where no one will be able to come and do a modification maybe they can try to create a new one but in the previous one they should not touch or they should not be able to do a modification so in that situation obviously tuple is going to be handy for me i can try to use tuple collection to store those kind of information and for sure i will not be using a list and that that's the only reason tuple has been created inside a python tuple is one of the collection it just behave like a list but again when it comes to a mutability and immutability it always try to follow a principle of immutability it simply means that that tuple is not going to allow you to change any kind of a things in any indexes again i think i i have told you already uh, by giving you a list and a string example that there is a difference between changing a data at the indexes and doing a reassignment operation so always keep in a mind don't just try to you know uh, create a same variable with a different data set and then tell me that now it's allowing no it's not allowing you there is a difference between item assignment and there is a difference between a mutability mutability simply means that if i am able to make a changes in a given indexes right assignment is different so if i'm trying to assign a different data to the same variable that is something called as item reassignment so item reassignment obviously it is going to allow but changing an element at a particular indexes is not allowed at all okay so here is a t3 right now let's suppose if i'm trying to access a data by using a negative indexes yes i'm able to do it so minus 1 i have written right it is able to access the very last element so with with this logic we are able to understand that even tuples follows a forward indexing concept and a backward indexing concept that we have already discussed with respect to a string and a list in very very detail so whatever operations that we have done with respect to a indexing and with respect to a slicing in case of a string or in case of a list exact same kind of a operation even tuples uses to follow exact same kind of a situation exact same thing even tuple uses to follow and here we are now so let's try to access maybe 2 3 4 and then 34.45 how i will be able to access so simple i think we all know the indexing concept so here index is 0 then 1 then 2 and then 3 and then 4 then 5 then 6 and then 7 maybe in a reverse direction it's a minus 1 it's minus 2 it's minus 3 it's minus 4 it's minus 5 it's minus 6 it's minus 7 it's minus 8 so if i have to access a data this particular data set if i have to access so maybe i can try to start from 0 i will go till 4 because we all know that that it is not going to fetch a data from an upper bound it will always try to extract upper bound and upper bound minus 1 data it will try to access okay so let's do it here so i can try to write t3 and then start from 0 go till what go till 4 here is a data set required data set that we are able to access that was a data which we were expecting and yes we are able to fetch the data similarly if someone is asking me a question that try to reverse this entire tuple colon colon minus 1 we have already discussed right and execute so we are able to print a reverse of the tuple it is not impacting my original tuple my original tuple if you are going to print t3 is going to be same this is just a run time outcome that we all are able to see okay fine so these are the 
things that we have already discussed with respect to a list and with respect to a string. So exactly same way, you can try to perform a slicing operation, you can try to perform an indexing operation, you can try to even use a scaling concept while doing a slicing operation and you will be able to get a desired outcome. Now, let, let's try to focus on an inbuilt function with respect to a tuple. So with respect to a tuple, there are some inbuilt function which is available. So let's try to understand that particular part. So let's suppose there is a T3. So there is a function called as count and there is a function called as indexes. With respect to a list, we had a multiple function. We had an append function, we had an insert function, we had an extend function. Because list supports mutability. So if it supports mutability, obviously you can try to add an element, you can try to remove an element. But as tuples never su support these things, so here we have count and we have our indexes. So count means what? If I have to count what is the occurrence of a particular entity. Let's suppose if I'm trying to count how many times 3 has appeared. How many times 3 has appeared in this entire tuples. So obviously 3 has appeared how many times? Only one time. Yes. So it is going to give me the count. Now with respect to a tuple, there is another function called as index, which is same as the string indexing function and a list indexing function. So here, if I'm going to write, what is a index of four, right? What is the index of four? Sorry. So index function, right? So here, what is the index of this particular element? So yes, if I'm going to print T3 over here. So what is the index of four? 0, 1, 2. So this is 2. So we are able to get 4 at second indexes. Again, this index function always try to represent the very first index or index of a very first occurrence of the data. Not a second, not a third, not a fourth or nth. It is always going to give you index of a very first occurrence of the data set. Simple. Okay, fine. Now, let's uh, try to understand. Let's suppose I have a string. Let's suppose I have a string SUDH, SUDH. If I am going to pass this data inside a tuple function, T-U-P-L-E tuple function, now what will happen to this particular data? Let's try to understand. So here, if I'm going to pass this particular data, which is an iterable entity, and this one is always going to consider a iterable. Yes, iterable means a kind of a data from where I can try to extract a data one by one, one by one by indexing, slicing, or maybe by using a iteration, by using a loops. So here, it will try to break down each and every data set into a smallest possible element, and then it is going to store it. This is a tuple that you all will be able to receive. Let's suppose if I'm going to pass maybe a data set, which is available in a list format. So here, SUDH, and then maybe I have certain numbers. Now, it will simply convert this entire list into a tuples. So if you have to do a conversion of a data type from list to tuples, you can do it easily. Let's suppose I have a tuple T3. Let's suppose I have a tuple T3 over here. I would like to convert this entire tuple into a list format. Will I be able to do it or not? So yes, I will be able to do it if I have to convert this entire tuple into a list format. Simple, call list list function, pass your T3, and here is a data that I'm able to receive. So list to tuples, tuples to list, easily you will be able to convert it and easily you will be able to process it. Okay, now let's suppose I have a tuple T4 over here. And out of this T4, out of this T4, so I have a certain data set inside this tuple. Okay, now out of this tuple, if I have to access a maximum element, I will be able to access it just like a list. So I can try to call a max function. I can try to pass a tuples over here. And whatever maximum data that we have inside a tuples, I will be able to access it. Let's suppose if I'm looking for a minimum data, I will be able to access that as well. So what is the minimum data? It's two, basically, which is available inside a tuples. Let's suppose if I'm looking for a summation of whole data, if I have a numeric data set, if I'm looking for a summation of whole data. So here I can try to call sum, I can try to pass tuple T4 and it is going to give me summation of the all data. At a place of T4, let's suppose if I'm going to consider T3, right? If I'm going to consider T3. Now if I'm going to call sum operation, if I'm going to pass my T3, let's see what happens. It is going to give you this error because we have basically 
this floating point number and we have a string and we have a complex number. So we have a variety of different different kind of a data. If it is just having a numeric data, whether it's an integer or floating point number, it is going to work. But we have a mixture of almost every kind of a data set and that is the reason it is not giving me a proper result. It is telling me that I'm not going to support this particular initiative. Simple. So here in this case, it is not going to behave. It is not going to work at all. Okay. Now, there is a function called as reversed. There is a function called as reversed. Let's suppose if I'm going to pass T3, right? If I'm going to pass T3 over here inside a reversed, it is going to give me the outcome. But this outcome is available after reversing the entire data set. It is giving me the outcome. But this outcome will be available in an object format. If I have to see the outcome, what I'm supposed to do? So maybe I can try to keep over here tuples. I can just try to enclose this one, this outcome into an tuple. And here is a reverse tuple which I am able to receive. So I can try to take a reverse by using a column column minus one. Or I can try to do a reverse just by using this reversed Python inbuilt function. Simple. Okay. Fine. Now, so the next one is, let's suppose if we have a tuple T4 and if I would like to get a data into a sorted format. So I can try to do what? So I can try to call sorted function. So it will try to sort the entire data set and then give me the result. As you can see, so it is giving me a result into a complete sorted format. So Again, same like a list. These are the external inbuilt function which is available inside a tuple. Now, let's suppose, let's suppose we have a tuples. So let's suppose we have a tuples. I can even try to keep a tuples inside a tuple. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then maybe I can try to keep in this way. And then maybe I can try to keep in this way okay so here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to keep tuples inside a tuples simple tuples inside a tuple so just like we were able to keep list inside a list in the exact similar manner so we are even able to keep tuples inside a tuples which is technically allowed so hope all of you are able to understand this entire tuple situation how tuple is similar to list how tuple is different from a list how we are able to do a indexing and slicing operation with respect to a tuples, how I will be able to use a tuples in built function, which is just to count and index function, nothing more than that, right? So all of these things we have discussed in this tuple chapter. So you can try to practice, you can try to, you know, uh, type as much as possible this entire things which I have given to you. And then let me know in a comment section, if you are facing any kind of issues or if you have any kind of a question in your mind, any kind of a confusion in your mind, please do let me know inside a comment box on a priority. I'll try to answer all of your question and I'll try to resolve it with that. Thank you so much, everyone. See you again in my next lecture.